Hey guys, welcome to this video. My name is John Watts. I'm a consumer protection lawyer and I sue credit bureaus under the Fair Credit Reporting Act. And so a question that comes up is, what if I do an investigation or I request an investigation and I don't get the results sent back to me? Can I sue for that? Well, this is a recent case and you can see this came out July 22nd. Now it is from the Ninth Circuit, which is going to be on the West Coast. So this does not bind every other federal judge across the country. But it does say, at least in the Ninth Circuit, this is their thought process. And that is that there must be an inaccuracy in order to have a case against a credit bureau. So let's take a look at this very short opinion. And they start off and they say, the FCRA, Fair Credit Reporting Act, imposes requirements on credit reporting agencies and provides a private cause of action for willful or negligent violation. In other words, you can sue if the credit bureau not just gets it wrong, but they are negligent or they are willful or reckless in what they do. And so they have this section in here, and this is all under uh, 1681I. And it says that the credit bureau must notify the consumer of the outcome of a reinvestigation. So you do a dispute, you're supposed to get a letter, it'll be called the results of investigation. And that will tell you either it's verified, so it's staying, or it's deleted, which means it's gone, or it's been updated, which means we're keeping it, but maybe we're changing the balance or we're changing some late payments or whatever it is. And so what happened here is these two folks sued Equifax and they say, look, Here's what happened. Very simple. They violated the Fair Credit Reporting Act by failing to provide notice of the results of reinvestigation of items on their credit reports. Now, factually, what happened is Equifax investigated each item and they said, it's totally fine. And this is really, really important because it would be a different result except for this sentence. Plaintiffs did not challenge the outcome of the reinvestigation. So they say, yeah, we agree. The information we dispute, it's being reported correctly. But we're going to sue you, Equifax, because you did not send us the results. Now, look, clearly Equifax is supposed to send the results of investigation. Absolutely should do that. And we're noticing, particularly in this COVID-19 time, that they often are not doing that. But that's the entirety of the case. And the district court, which is the judge, the trial judge, said, look, I'm, I'm ruling in favor of Equifax. So I'm granting summary judgment, no reason to have a trial, I'm just summarily entering judgment, finding plaintiffs have failed to satisfy the prima facie element, which just means when we sue somebody under, whether it's negligence or fraud or whatever it is, There'll be a list of elements that we have to meet. Think of it like a, a checklist. So you got to, you know, if it's a fraud, it has to be a false statement about something important that you properly relied upon and you have damages. If you're missing one of those elements, then there's no case. And here the judge said it has to actually be inaccurate or you have no case. And so now the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals is looking at this. And they start off very simply and they say, although the text does not condition the duty to reinvestigate on an accuracy, we held in this previous case from 2008, section 1681I, and we have a video that we did a few weeks ago on that, a uh, few weeks ago on that, 1681I is the investigation claim against the credit bureau. So you can remember it because it got the letter I, so it's investigation. Section 1681I creates no duty to reinvestigate where the credit report accurately reflects the status of information contained in the public record. Now that had to do with public records, but then they'll expand on it. And they'll say, we subsequently confirmed that the FCRA's reinvestigation provision requires an actual inaccuracy exists for a plan to state a claim. And that's the case from 2010. And then they say, without any analysis, without any explanation, under our precedent, district court therefore did not err in holding the suit fell because there was no genuine dispute that the information plans files was accurate. Now, I'm not saying I agree with this, and it certainly 
does not have much explanation to it. But at least if you're in the Ninth Circuit, understand that this is the way the Ninth Circuit is leaning. So even if Equifax doesn't send you the results of investigation, which they clearly have to do, the Fair Credit Reporting Act absolutely requires that they do that. The Ninth Circuit is going to say, well, look, if, if the information was accurate to start with, no big deal. Okay. Now, what they don't say is what if Equifax had corrected something or deleted something but did not tell you? Could you sue over that? I don't know what the Ninth Circuit would do. And I will say this about this particular case. It says not for publication. This is kind of a, a legacy rule, you know, before the Internet where we sort of had cases that were published and it would be in what's called like the F second or F third. And then we have cases that were not published. Now you could still kind of find those, but it's very difficult. Now it's very easy because everything is, is online. But they say, uh, this little footnote here is not appropriate for publication and is not precedent except as provided by Ninth Circuit Rule 36.3. So all the circuits have a little different view of what a an unpublished decision is. I'll tell you this as a practical matter. Most judges that try cases, district court judges in federal court, they don't really care whether it says for publication, not publication. This is what the Ninth Circuit has ruled. And so it has a lot of value. So again, the, the reason I bring this up is the focus of, of doing disputes under the FCRA has to be on inaccuracies. I see people all the time say, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to dispute a bankruptcy that is being reported 100% accurate. And I'm going to dispute that because I think the credit bureau is not able to go verify it because maybe I've done something with LexisNexis or I've got this letter from the bankruptcy court says they don't verify. And then I'm going to sue when it stays on there. Well, in most places, the federal judge is going to look at it and say, did you file a bankruptcy? You're like, well, yeah. Is the information on there correct? Well, yeah, but, but they didn't verify. It doesn't matter. Accuracy is the key here. So we need to dispute things that are inaccurate, and we need to bring suit on things that are inaccurate. And this is just an example, this case of showing that. So hope that that's helpful to you, and appreciate you watching this. I'll catch you guys in the next one. All right, have a good one. Bye-bye.